I just got back from an 11 day trip to Arizona. So yeah, some boxes have piled up. We got some work to do. But is it really work? The answer to that is no. This isn't work. It certainly doesn't feel like it. In fact, this is some of the most fun I have making videos. I mean, who wouldn't enjoy cracking open a ton of boxes of their favorite thing in the world? And for me, that being Disney cars. So yeah, guys, welcome to Giga Hall Part 26. Very excited for this one. Like I said, a lot of stuff has piled up while I've been away, and I've also brought back some really cool finds from my time in Arizona. So yeah, sit back, get a snack, whatever you like. This is going to probably be a long one, and it will definitely be worth it every minute of the way. I do feel a bit under the weather, so hopefully that doesn't shine through. I don't think it will because I am just so thrilled and pumped to get into what we have here. I'm gonna start with Glow Racers Will Rush. By the time you see this video, I probably will have reviewed him by now. But yeah, I was waiting this entire time for Mattel to release him as a single because I did not want to open up the four pack and end up with three duplicates, Cruz, Mater, and McQueen. So yeah, just took a while. I did find this guy while I was in Arizona at a Target. In fact, he was face down in a Hot Wheels Glow Racers Cross hybridized dump bin. So very lucky to have found them because the pegs at the store were pretty bad. I think I will eventually show it in a hunt video, which also may have been uploaded by the time you see this. Who knows? But yeah, Glow Racers Will was one of my favorite scores while I was in Arizona. He might be pretty common or he might end up being pretty common, but as of now, he's actually quite rare as a single. I think a lot of people were waiting for the single release of him to come. By the way, we're gonna wait for that box. Let's just open this one right here because it's super easy. As you can see, we have some new Atomica items. Ice Racer, so yeah, Atomica is re-entering the Ice Racer's world. They did do McQueen a long time ago and it was super rare. And so here's their second attempt at him, which looks awesome. He's got the snowy tires, which he did not have when Atomica did him before. But the really cool thing about this is that they're doing cars that you wouldn't normally associate with the ice racers, you know, not ones that Mattel or the Disney store did in 2016 and that whole era of transcontinental race of champions. So now you have Cruz Ramirez, which is in this first wave. We're getting Jackson Storm and Mater in the next wave. It might stop there, or maybe they'll go on with Danny Suarez or Trace Racelet, which would be awesome. But yeah, very excited about these two. I will be reviewing them very soon. And yeah, like I said, Jackson and Mayor will come and then we'll review those as well. But yeah, just really cool to see Cruz Ramirez as an ice racer. I think in this box we have some things that, man, I've been waiting for for a long time. I have wanted this stuff for forever. But they are very hard to find in good condition. And we're going to start with the main attraction here and that is this blue Disney store Lieutenant Lightning McQueen so yeah he was a part of a McQueen Arama five pack yeah that's the name McQueen Arama they've done a couple of those there was like a Ramon one as well so he was exclusive to that set and I never got that set because some of the other items in it I didn't really care for I mean most of their stuff is just very boring and the fact that they even made this guy blue and not his normal black is super weird to me but maybe they're insinuating that this is how he would look in color because made a private eye was in black and white but on the other hand they also did do a lieutenant lightning mcqueen in quote unquote color where the badge was this and his siren was red and they also did a just purely black and white one so yeah they've really kind of had bipolar thoughts with lieutenant mcqueen but either way i needed this kind of metallic blue one and there have been a bunch on ebay but they have all been in just absolute decrepit condition so this one popped up and yeah i was super grateful to get it for a good price this one here is also from that same multi-pack not quite as cool but still pretty interesting it is the radio springs 500 and a half lightning mcqueen but with silver gear so when they've done him before his gear has not been quite this color and yeah, so it's slightly different. It's really, again, a very strange choice 
to do in this McQueen pack instead of just doing the normal one. But I guess they were very calculated. They wanted to change just a couple little things here to get people to buy the whole set. But for me, I just waited and waited. And yeah, this also is a really cool base here with the way they did the axles and all that. But he doesn't have suspension, which that would kind of suggest that he does. But yeah, really cool. Happy to get this for sure. And then in the same vein but not quite this guy's much easier to get it's ice racers lightning mcqueen from the disney store so yeah big ice racers vibe going on i just never got this guy i just think he looks really good for a disney store release like they have a great expression on mcqueen which usually is not typical like you can see here i don't like this expression on lieutenant mcqueen at all i think it's quite bad I'm not even a big fan of the off-road mcqueen here but I think they did a great job with this Ice Racers McQueen. I love the snow. I love the rubber tires. I love everything about it. And just thought, why not add it to the collection as well? Disney Store stuff is so underrated, as you guys know. And hey, we'll look there in the back. There's another Disney Store item. I finally bit the bullet on this just absolute amalgamation of a five-pack. There's so many weird things with this five-pack. They do call it just pullback diecast multi-pack. But... Not only <laughs> is it a bunch of just random racers pulled from three movies, you know, you have Murray Clutchburn, who's from Cars 1, I guess, you know, you have three next gens, which makes sense, and then you have Francesco Bernoulli, who they just refer to as Francesco in it. This is such an odd pack, but it's sold everywhere, you know, it's at the, you know, stores in Shanghai Disney, I believe, it's at stores in Disney World in Florida and Disneyland in California. So they really like this pack. I got it off Amazon and I knew it would come absolutely mangled, which it is like the blister up here is cracked and it's just an overall poor condition. So I will be opening it up. The other weird thing about it is that Murray Clutchburn over here is using <laughs> the completely wrong mold. You know, he's supposed to be the longer piston cup model, which is of leakless or crusty rotor you know vinyl toupee i mean the list goes on and on james cleaner for vitaline and the disney store has not really dabbled in too many of that model in fact if you guys know of any time they've done one like that please let me know because i can't really i'm not thinking off the top of my head of any piston cup racers they've done in that model and so i guess they're just incapable of doing it because they put murray clutchburn on like the quote-unquote rpm model or the octane game model which they also don't do a whole lot of. They have done, you know, they have done RPM, but they love doing just kind of the no stall model, Chuck Armstrong model, etc. They have done a four wheel drive giant blamer though, so that is true. But yeah, it's just a really weird pack. And to top it off, the top of my Michael Rotor is really just gross looking. You can see it's got like some dust on it. Yeah, that is on him. It's not on the plastic encasing. But you know, whatever. I'm just so tired of haggling with companies these days which i do do a lot of because customer service and you know companies screw up a lot and so i'm always just on the phone with people you know trying to get my money back for something they messed up on and i'm not gonna go a battle over that i just don't it's just not worth it to me in my time right now I've got so many other things to do all right here we have a box not sure what's in here it looks like some oh oh some prototypes i was like what is that i don't remember these now i do all right here we go with so hmm i'm going to say this is a rodat marker prototype but i'm not sure honestly with that mouth it might not be i'll have to do a comparison obviously maybe a prototype prestige episode is in or should be in the cards because yeah this definitely requires a little bit more attention obviously it could be you know just strictly going off model it could be i guess it probably is likely a suki prototype just based on the moth right it can't be a chaisaki prototype or a harumi prototype because their models are different and we know they have not done a chigo from a thailand which is what this prototype is from again as you guys may or may not have heard but i've talked about it a lot if you see a prototype that is this dark blue color with a tan base, especially with a sticker like this on it, that means it's a Thailand prototype, even if it doesn't say made in Thailand. It's not a made in China 
not prototype, so therefore it rules out Ichigo, but then rules in Rodet Marker and those other three. So I think it will be between Suki and Rodet Marker. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. I'm sure you guys will let me know. Obviously, the yellow wing here on the top could indicate that it is Rodet Marker. It just kind of feels that way, but who knows? And then we'll have another debate with this one here because it could be either Sterling or K-Pillar Derev because they have the exact same expression so we can't figure it out with the mouth. I would go ahead and say this is a K-Pillar Derev prototype just because it feels like both of these just feel newer, you know? And again, like I said, it could be Suki or Red Marker. The newness doesn't really matter, but they have not done Sterling from Thailand in a while. So I'm gonna say that this is probably for K-Pillar Derev and they have done quite a few K-Pillar Derevs, you know, two packs, singles, etc., cetera, multi-pack. So very easily could have ended up from this could easily have been a K-Pillar draft, you know, like, because the Sterling was much longer ago that they did from Thailand. He does have a number on him, which is 018, pretty interesting, and a lot of chips, but I'm totally cool with that. This axle is also kind of messed up here in the back, but overall it looks really cool and a very, very exciting set of prototypes to add to the collection here. They're the only two that I have seen like that. You know, I'm sure more exist out in the world, but those are the only ones that I have personally seen. All right, of course, I believe this is the obligatory Battle Force 5 <laughs> score of every Giga Hall. Might be one of the best in terms of the history of the Giga Halls because these are 3D printed of unreleased Battle Force 5 cars that Mattel canceled. Yeah, they canceled. This is the Synthrax. Cryrosis's vehicle and man it's so cool that I was able to find somebody who could 3d print these and look fantastic this is just beautiful you know the wheels turn and it rolls nicely and it also is just dead accurate so cool may have a very nice material as well feels super legit oh man so grateful to have these very excited I mean, they're going to look fantastic in the collection. And yeah, you guys are probably looking at this if you haven't seen Battle Force 5 and like, wow, that is a wacky looking vehicle. That's a wacky car. And you absolutely are right. It is super duper like out there and weird, but it's supposed to be. These are technically alien vehicles. So yeah, very excited about that. And of course, to come with that is the Cinetar, which is Krylox's vehicle. And just look at how intricate this is. This also has wheels that roll. I mean, to be able to have crafted something so detailed with so many like little turns and look at all the platforms, all the angles on this thing. It's just ridiculous how to a T it looks, how accurate it is. I'm not even sure how Mattel would have been able to do this and clearly we'll never know because they canceled both of these and there's no way they will ever be uncanceled because the show has been canceled itself for over like 12 years now. So yeah, really cool, very excited about these. Cannot wait to find a great spot in the collection to display those. All right, moving right along here, we have this tall box here. I think this also has some prototypes. Oh my goodness, they're all in like little balls, little bubble wrap balls. All right, toss that box to the side here. We're going to need my handy dandy whatever this is called. Oh, maybe not. Oh, that was easy enough. Yep, so we do have some more prototypes here. This one I was super excited about. I actually have a prototype of Boost with Flames from when he was originally released in 20... 2013. He was released a couple times, but in like the mid-2010s. And here we have another Boost with Flames prototype. This one, of course, for his Thailand release. Now, I do believe, why do I feel like he was canceled from Thailand in 2019? Like, so many different things were planned for 2019 and then canceled. I mean, the tractors are the popular one everyone know about. Taco Mint tr Crew Chief, which is coming now. Fiber Fuel Crew Chief, etc. But there's a lot more, like, hidden ones. Like, the Sushi Chefs were canceled. I think Christina Whelan and a few other race fans. I think also Boost with Flames was among that. The reason why I say that and that it's not for the upcoming 2024 release is that it just 
is older. And like, I don't think a prototype for something from 2024 is really leaked out yet. I know, like we talked about, that could be a road that marker, but I do think that might be a Suki rather. But yeah, this is super cool. I love the Matchbox tires that it uses. It's got the treads on it, and then you got the transparent flames back there. But again, yeah, you guys could see if it has that dark blue paint, this is from Thailand. It doesn't make it only. Like, this is clearly, you know, this is probably from Thailand. But I guess it's not 100% confirmed that this Sterling or Kepler Drev is from Thailand. But these dark blue ones definitely are. So yeah, really cool. Very excited about this one. And yeah, maybe we'll have some clues for what year well i guess yeah that is definitely the yeah probably the canceled version but maybe we'll have some more clues based on these other prototypes in the same batch here because this one is going to really stump a lot of people it is most definitely for a canceled car because thailand has never done a crew chief like this Believe it or not, they have not done the Leakless Crew Chief or the RPM Crew Chief or Roman Dunes, the No Stall Crew Chief or Ernest B. Rakes, the Sparrowman Crew Chief or the Shiny Wax Crew Chief, whatever his name is, Senior Tracks. And those are the only Crew Chiefs, the ones I just listed off, that use this model. And obviously, they have a headset, right? Like, you can't say this is the race official Tom, who, yes, is this model, but he doesn't have the headset. And yeah, based on the mouth there, it could be the leakless crew chief. Uh, yeah, no, he's got more of a smile, so it can't be the leakless crew chief. Guys, I don't know, man. He's got one hell of a smile right there. I'm gonna have to look into that, guys. But this is definitely for a canceled item of some sort. It does say made in Thailand here, so that confirms it. It's got an interesting. There's the product code. It also has one of these stickers, but can't really read anything on it. It does say FL L89, which is the pro code on the base there. And then 08 of, that looks 27, so August 27th. And yeah. Hmm, very interesting. You guys let me know what you think about this. I think the majority of people will probably say this is like a Roman Dunes prototype because he might have been playing for 2019. But yeah, a lot of questions, but super cool prototype. Very, very exciting to add to my collection. And a complete bare metal as well with the red, cherry red headset. All right, let's keep on moving along here. This one, I don't think is quite as exciting as the other two because there are so many like XRS prototypes. And yeah, this is another XRS prototype. Man, I don't know why, but... Just so many prototypes got made and leaked out for the XRS Mud Racers. I should clarify whether they be engineering prototypes where they look complete and just have a stamp number on them or they're like this and are completely unpainted. But I have not seen any yellow McQueens like this. You know, there's a lot of like a blue or a bare metal McQueen prototype going around. But yellow ones like this are, yeah, pretty much limited to what I'm holding. I've never seen one. And it's super cool. It's got the red... Bars here on the side, black tires, brown base. This is, as you can see, a made in China prototype. So kind of a very strange batch of prototypes to include China and Thailand. But yeah, super interesting and another very exciting add to the collection. The prototype market has opened up again. It's been very dry for the last couple months. And honestly, last couple of years, probably like the last year and a half, it's been really dry and it's just picked up again, which is a really good thing for a avid prototype collector like myself. Just allows me to get into, yeah, get into what I love a little bit more. I'm sorry, I paused there because I was looking at what's in this box. It's like, I was so confused. I had no idea what was in this box for a second. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? All right, first off, we have what looks to be an engineering prototype of the Mickey Mouse Lightning McQueen. Now, I believe, see, hmm, this one could be a fake. Yeah, this is very liable to be a fake, to be quite frank with you guys. It's not stamped the way that I usually would see some of these stamped. Like, you can kind of feel the engraving, but... It just, it's not the exact same font 
that we see on the real deals like the sterling here and you know obviously a ton of others there's also like a weird like little it's like a banner starting like right here you can see like almost a line where there's a different shade of red as if like they needed to put like a decal over it to stamp it or something it also has a date stamp which is never a good sign at all so a little concerning here on this one i might have been duped but i have definitely wised up a little bit I mean, it also is just weird for that Mickey Mouse logo to be just so torn up when everything else on this McQueen looks fine. Like, it just, it gives me the ick. It gives me some weird vibes. And the seller also was listing Factory Custom, Factory Customs with stampings on them, which is a major, that is very scary. That is super duper scary because it shows you that <laughs> these things could have the ability to be faked. And yeah, the thing that kept me from, or the thing that allowed me to buy that Mickey Mouse McQueen is because the there are factory customs of this Mickey Mouse McQueen, but the expression is different. This is the legit version, like with the eye play and everything. So I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Here we have Studs McGirdle. This one also, you know, has the ability to possibly be faked. It does not have a date stamp. And I have seen stuff from this era 2016 with date stamps and all that, but it still is a very peculiar release to have that. So who knows? Who knows, guys? The problem with the whole thing in general is like these prototype sellers, the people who sell these, they're like, wow, man, them Americans, they just love buying random cars with numbers on it. Like, Geez, they really just like things with little three-digit codes on it. Hmm. And stuff like that is super easy to fake, you know. And so they caught on, and yeah, they kind of went after it. They went after it big time. I know, you know, one of my good friends who collects prototypes received some similar to these that were fake, that he deemed to be fake, like a Holly Shiflaw, I think it was. But you just got to be careful out there. I mean, I tell you guys, you know, how to avoid fakes and know what's real and what's not in my Prototype Prestige series, but it is still a very difficult game. It's still difficult. This one is 100% legit, though. This is a canceled Easter Luigi, and it does have a code that looks very much like, you know, we're used to. Yeah, believe it or not, Luigi was planned for an Easter release, and yeah, this is it right here. You could tell by the expression that is unique to this version here. So that's really cool. What else do we have in this bag, this batch? This is getting messy here, guys. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah, this one seems super fake. <laughs> oh, man, I probably should not have bought this one. Carla Veloso. See, the problem with this is that it's just so old. Like, this one's probably from, like, 2012 because of that mouth play. It could be. It also has a bunch of random Sharpies. See, this one might very well be legit because I don't trust that the uh, factory customizer or the people who would fake these to have known the perfect date to put on them. Like, like I said, this is a 2012, 2011 Carlo Veloso. And they wrote May 28th, 2011 on it. They have these nice arrows, which just seem kind of legit. I don't know. It's hard, guys. It's a really tough business to be in this 167 over here. It looks fine. But it would be very early for a car to receive a stamping. Again, before, you know, this Carlo Velosa that we're holding right here, the earliest car that I had seen stamped was a 2013 Miles Axeride with opening hood that was 100% confirmed to be legit. And so, you know, most of the stamped cars, like the coded prototypes, come from 2017 to 2018. And, you know, we still see some now, of course, but that's when it started and that's when, like, the majority of them exist. Like, in many of my Giga Hauls, you see me just going through, like, Taco, Sigler, APB, H.J. Hollis. Those are all 2017 cars. And so it just yeah, it raises some eyebrows a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, you just got to be super careful. And keep your head on a swivel, as they say. All right, we have a couple more. These two last ones I know for sure are legit, as we just talked about with XRS Mud Racers. They have just the most prototypes in terms of categories. I don't know why so many of these leaked out. Maybe it corresponds with you know, why so many of these got made. But yeah, it does have the 258 right there. No date stamp. All is good in the hood. 
yeah, I already have one of these stamps, so I'm not really sure why I bought it. It was a little bit of an impulse buy. <laughs> Probably should not have done that. Here we have a drip. Or no, this is not drip. This is blackout. I get them confused sometimes. The smoke jumpers. And I think I had one of these in a previous Giga Haul as well. So this is going to be my second. Again, a very odd car to have a stamp like this. The 175 on the back. Very strange. Like we've never seen any other smoke jumpers like it. So again, you know, raises some eyebrows for sure. But to make myself sleep better at night, we're going to assume this one is real. Because if it's not, then I got two fakes of the same car. Just be careful out there, guys. I made an Instagram post as soon as I saw that there were factory customs listed with these codes on them. There was a Chrome Cruise Ramirez. And which we know is a factory custom like Mattel never did a chrome Dynaco Cruiser Ramirez, So that one's super easy to tell and then a security guard Fimic missile both of which may very well could still be on eBay The security guard Finn had the expression of the factory custom So that's why I knew that one was fake But the other ones are definitely a little bit more ambiguous and you know as uh, <laughs> the factory customizers and the people who make these fakes learn more about these collectors behavior like myself and you know my buddy and all that they uh, get smarter and they know they know how to kind of navigate what we're looking for a little bit better all right let's move right along here to whatever's in this box oh this is a custom order looks like there's something else in here too I'm not sure what this is maybe it's just uh, oh yeah it's just paper <laughs> I thought there was something in there all right, let's get that box back up here. So these are from Daro Design, who runs the Cars Diecast Club on Facebook. I've reviewed many of his customs in the past and we'll be reviewing a lot more as time goes on. There's a few, I think actually, have I uploaded them all? No, there's still, I think one that I have not uploaded, but I have had it for a while. And then these are three brand new ones that we will you know, eventually get to review at one point here. And oh my goodness, these could be a hassle to open up. See how long this takes here. <laughs> In the meantime, comment below how your day is going. That's, a, that's an order, you have to. <laughs> that didn't take that long. So, Dar Design has done a bunch of these Disney Store paint jobs on Mattel bodies, which I just absolutely love because the Disney store came up with some really cool designs. Well, the artists that they collaborated with did. Not sure exactly what artist this one was, but it is actually, I don't have this one loose in terms of the Disney store. This is the only like, or one of the only artist series that I didn't end up opening. And it's actually very funny because they did a Mater McQueen and Fillmore in this blue white stripe design. I use, okay, the artist is Bob Pauly. That's easy enough. The reason I know that is because I use the Mater every single video that requires elevation. Like if I'm just reviewing something on the ground here from the beginning to the end, I don't use it, but I literally use the Mater in the Disney Store acrylic case as a riser for my camera stand in every video, guys. And so I'm looking at it right now. Like you can't see it, but I'm looking at it right now. And so, yeah, really cool. We'll be reviewing this sometime in 2024. Not really sure when, but it will get reviewed at some point. I have a lot of customs that I need to get through for this year that I got from like Shane Cooper, Jim Scavenger, you know, the usual suspects. And so, yeah, we'll just take a while. I want to space them all out too. you know, find the right opportunities that intermix with the new reviews. And yeah, that's the perfect recipe for making these custom videos. Here we have one of the Hawaiian McQueens. So we have two Hawaiian McQueens. You'll see the next one in a moment here, but the artist for this one was none other than John Lasseter. And yeah, this has got like a magnetic surfboard on top, which is super cool. You can see that it just connects and yeah, it's not gonna fall over. So this is the metallic one that they did. That's a little bit more special than, well, I'll take a look at the other one. We'll be able to have a better conversation about it. I will do reviews on this, but yeah, really cool. Absolutely love the surfboard. I think that's a phenomenal ad. And yeah, just got a really cool design going for this cruising Lightning McQueen. 
Hawaiian Cruising Lady McQueen now. So this one's going to be very similar to that with a slightly different paint job. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. Okay, yeah, so this was the special one that they did in a four pack and also they emulated it when they did like a one and 24 scale version of it, I believe. They did a lot of Disney store like special McQueens that were only available at like D23 or they go for like hundreds of dollars. And yeah, this is like the Mattel version of that quote unquote. I think it's going to be my favorite. I love the decals on this one and the brighter shade of red but both of them are awesome both of them will get reviews on the channel in the future probably we'll do one pretty soon and then the other ones will get spaced out a little bit more all right guys and yeah we're just cruising right along here no need to stop just yet so let's get into some of my more in-store finds from my arizona trip i have not looked at these since <laughs> i pack them you know and they went on a plane you know they went through security they went through everything tsa probably diddled with them and all that so hopefully they're still in good condition because the only thing that i planned on opening was that glow racers will rush so fingers crossed that everything in here is good i triple bagged it i tried my best so that they would you know have a bunch of protection because i knew that would be tough taking them on the plane and everything and in fact when I came back from Arizona last year in 2023, I also had a ton of stuff. And unfortunately, some of it did get damaged. So I tried to be prepared this time. These are not Disney cars. They are Easter cars. The full Easter set that I was able to get from Safeway, which is a very, very popular store down in Arizona. There's a ton of them around. And I went in there. I was wondering if they would have cars or anything of the sort. And it didn't look like they have a designated section for that but they had these strips like a little not really sure how you would call it but yeah just basically a little strip of hot wheels in a bunch of aisles and they had regular ones and they also had these easter ones so i decided to pick up a full set i thought they looked really good i really love the tires on this ford escort here but yeah overall they just look great and i love easter i love all the colors that come along with it so excited about that for sure kind of a different score in the giga hall here all right i'm a little worried about this next bag here because they it kind of slid around but again it was it was bagged up well there is one car in here that i absolutely needed to come in good condition it's todd the pizza plant truck i'm just going to spoil it all right now this first one here already was in rough condition but it looks like it did get a little rougher and that is the d100 fabulous hudson hornet Got this at Fry's, another very popular store out there. But yeah, this corner got even worse than it was, unfortunately. That is kind of, yeah, unfortunate to say it again. Hopefully that does not translate over to everything here. And yeah, so far so good. I picked up some extra road at markers. They were abundant down there to the high heavens. I don't know if that's just everywhere now, but in Arizona, Walmart's probably found about 12 road at markers between the very few stores I ended up going to. So I picked up, you know, a couple to give to my friends. I know Trunk Fresh Green 34 needs one. And I also wanted to have a couple extras. I actually like Rodette. like Rodette more than most people. <laughs> and that shows in how many I bought. Just, it's hard to leave like a new car behind. You guys know what I'm saying? All right, two more bags, two more bags. The Todd, I guess. Yeah, the Todd is in here because I used the thickest bag to wrap him in. Focus in so you guys can look at that while I unwrap this here. You guys should really see how my studio looks after recording a giga haul. I mean, it's just a mess. I mean, you got bubble wrap everywhere. You got cardboard everywhere. It smells like cardboard from all the packages that I just shred open. And I have to record. Yeah, the other thing that was technically a part of this gig haul is 2024 Singles Case E. But I don't want to show you guys just a random box. So here we have Adam Rodriguez on the 2024 card. First time seeing him in a store was down there. Because, well, it was my first time seeing Case A from 2024 in a store. So I picked up him, which was quite nice. Quite nice of a find. Along with Fabulous Doc Hudson here. Dirt Track Fabulous Hudson Hornet. 
even though he looks very similar to the 2023 version. He has 2024 releases on the back. And Todd is in here, and Todd is perfect. Thank God. Got lucky with that one. Todd the Pizza Planet Truck on 2024 card, which I did manage to find down there. Here he is. And again, you'll see it in the hunt episode, whatever, or whenever that comes out. But yeah, very pumped about that. Actually, yeah, he was included in one of the shorts I did as well while I was down in Arizona. So a lot of appearances for Todd. And here is a Radiator Springs Lane McQueen that I picked up as well. All right. I think we only have one more box in here or one more bag from my in-store finds. And then we'll probably cut and I'll wait for a few more things to come to finish off this giga haul. All right. What we have in here, I wrapped these in some nice turquoise paper. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Man, I put so many bags around these, but I wanted to protect them, like I said. Oh, these are two packs that I found at Target while I was down there. Got Will Rush and Tim Treadless. Unfortunately, I didn't find Edwin Cranks or Greta or Chiefess and Jeremy. Those ones I have not found at all yet, but I did manage to find McQueen and Sally. And Will and Rush, or Will and Tim. And they are on perfect cards, so happy about that. Straighten out his little surfboard there. All right, guys, I'll see you in a second when I get some more stuff. All right, lucky you guys. That didn't take long at all. But for me, it's actually been three weeks since I've recorded for the Giga Hall. So I'm glad to be back. I got a whole bunch of stuff to show you guys. But before we get into any new stuff, I want to revisit two of the prototypes that I just showed you a couple minutes ago. It has been confirmed now that this crew chief is actually for the unreleased canceled Transberry Juice crew chief because of the reference number here, the product code FLL89 on the base because there was a Walmart listing for the Transberry Juice crew chief that also shared that same number and therefore we could match them up and bada bing, bada boom, this is the Transberry Juice crew chief. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty wild that they decided to go back to the classic model that they used way back in the day. But yeah, it doesn't really match any of the other expressions. You know, Leakless, Ernest B. Rake, Shiny Wax, all those guys. It's kind of a unique one. So it's pretty cool to have a prototype of a canceled car. And now we kind of know what he would have looked like, even though unlike for Taco Mint and Fiber Fuel, pictures were actually released of those ones, but not for Transberry Juice. And then this was definitely not row that marker, just based on the expression you could see right there. You compare this to Suki, and yep, it's a perfect match. So this prototype, even though it would kind of make sense with the yellow wing on the top, that would be for row that marker. It kind of feels that way. It is actually for a Suki. And yeah, I kind of got thrown off because I thought this could have been K Pillar Drev. I just had clown vibes on the mind. But yeah, I just wanted to follow up on that. Let's get into all the new stuff here. I have a lot more prototypes, but I am going to advertise a future or maybe a surrounding video of mine. It might already be out, but I'm going to do a prototype haul video just because I've gotten so many prototypes in over the last month. They all deserve their own video outside of even the Giga Haul. So I'm only going to tease you guys with some of them in this video. So if the video is not out yet, wait for it, tune back in a couple days or weeks. If it is already out yet, go check that video out a prototype haul it'll be marked it'll be insane there are going to be so many new prototypes and just wild revelations in it but i will show you guys some of them in this video first off we have a doc hudson this one's definitely not a wild revelation but it's a pretty cool prototype with the red base and all that for a newer doc you can see the sharpie of his product code it matches well no it actually doesn't dxv70 DKG22. That's actually very interesting. They do not match. So something might have gone mixed up there. Here we have a super beat up Natalie Certain, but it's my first prototype of her and she's really cool. I love the red and the yellow and it does have a code on the top 044. So this is one of the only, actually it's the only prototype like this I've seen where I have seen another version of that dock. I've also seen quite a few of this Chick Hicks prototype, but I finally was able to get my hands on it. Kind of fitting that I have Natalie Certain and Chick Hicks here from Cars 3 together. 
but they came from completely different places. But yeah, pretty cool. Cars three chick. It's weird that his wheels are completed, painted and all, but everything else is not the headset, the body. But yeah, it's a cool look with all the colors going on there. Then we have none other than one of the delivery trucks. So this could be for the canceled TS2, the blue and yellow truck that they were going to do in the Radio Springs Classic line. They also intended to do Miles Me Truck Malone in the Radio Springs Classic line. So it could be for either of those two. I'm going to hope and maybe, I don't know, it doesn't really matter to me. Both of them are canceled, but it's always cool to say you have a prototype of a canceled car and maybe that product code, I don't know, that N8, Floor 70. Maybe that can confirm something, but that's not usually how the product codes are written. But this one just stands out to me because he's got a pink trailer back here. It looks so cool. Stands out big time with the bare metal and the black bumper up front here. And also, maybe we could just figure it out by the expression. Who knows? Maybe it's even like a Dustin Mellows, which is the original truck that used this model. Yeah, moving right along here. Speaking of Oh geez, Dan Sklarkenberg was supposed to be released in 2010, so he was almost an OG, but got pushed back to 2016. This prototype is for the 2016 one, I do believe. Would be pretty insane if it is from the 2010 version, but I don't think so because it's a unibody, and the one that would have come out in 2010 would not have been a unibody. It would have had a mouth plate. So yeah, it looks really nice. Just a typical white prototype though, very beat up. A lot of these are with a red base. So yeah, pretty stoked about that one. These all will make a reappearance in the prototype haul video though, just so you guys are aware of that. A couple more here though. A couple of Vietnam prototypes. So this is something you guys may not know. We all know that each country's prototypes, country of production's prototypes, have distinct characteristics that identify them as you know either a Thailand prototype or a China prototype. Like for example, that Boost with Flames, you know, he had the dark blue body and the beige base. That screams Thailand. The Transberry Juice one also had a beige base. And also prototypes like this in the red kind of tend to be Thailand made as well, I believe. Those ones are a little bit trickier though. Actually, no, those are Chinese prototypes because they have the codes on them. So excuse me. But black prototypes will be from Vietnam. If you see one in complete black coloring like this, that means they are Vietnam prototypes. And here are a couple of examples of that. This is a next gen, could be a Tim Treadless or whatever. I really have no idea with the wing. It probably could be narrowed down a little bit more though. And here's a Cruz Ramirez. Pretty cool. She's got yellow Savio mirrors, whereas the next gen had the gray wing. So they do have some color to them and it comes through their plastic pieces. I have a bunch more that I'll show you guys in the prototype haul. And last but not least for this group of prototypes, this is your regular XRS Berry to pedal. Okay. Well, what is this then? This is a prototype of him in a lighter shade of blue. It's like a purple almost, like a metallic purple. You can clearly see that the colors are different there. The eyes are a little bit different as well. So kind of a cool prototype. He does have a code up front here as well. Something 4-2 in the bottom left there. So very cool. Glad to have snatched that one, even though it is a pretty minor, but it does kind of tell a story along with it, and that's what I love. All right, let's get on to some of those color changers that you see back there. One a lot more desirable than the other, and that is this two-pack of Francesco and World Grand Prix Lightning McQueen from 2011. That's right, they did continue with the color changer two-packs all the way through 2011, but most of them are uber rare. There's even a Francesco and Raul Cerul pack that is pretty much extinct. It's basically a unicorn. This one, close. It's still a little bit more common though, but by common, I mean like, yeah, you would still struggle to get one of these if you wanted to and had all the money in the world because they don't pop up all that often. But yeah, just a super cool presentation. I love seeing Francesco and McQueen up there in their colors. I've always loved that the plastic versions of Francesco have the correct side view mirrors where they're extended and elevated off the body instead of the die cast, which literally just are like flat nubbins. 
and there's McQueen with his super growly expression. Both of these were released as singles, so nothing is exclusive except for the paintbrush, pretty much, but it's not like and that's too desirable. But yeah, to find this on such a good card was very lucky. The paintbrush was kind of cool, although I don't think it ever worked as well as they're describing it to be here with putting the perfect stripes down the body. And I will also say that the stock image of Color Changers Francesco is absolutely horrible. Like, what the hell were you thinking, Mattel? Look at those eyes. I mean, I don't know how you would not have a nightmare off seeing those eyes because they are absolutely terrifying. Jesus, in the morning. Here we have one of the newest color changers, Revo Koss. I just found this at Target. It's his second shift, which is pretty boring. I really don't like this color changer at all, but I had to get it, obviously. He goes from like a dark blue to a light blue. He's got the purple in the front that doesn't change. So very similar to a shift from before even. It's not like they changed the side of the color spectrum they were on and went to like a yellow or a red. Nope, all sticking in those colder shades. So I will review this. Maybe the video's already out on my channel, but I will review it with the yellow to blue Fabulous Hudson Hornet that I have yet to get because that one is definitely a lot more desirable than Revo. Just speaking the truth. All right, we got all these small boxes now. A lot of factory customs in these to conclude this episode of the Giga Hall, this installment. So we have Jimmy Cables here. You can clearly tell it's an FC, a fake, a counterfeit, a knockoff, a bootleg car, whatever you want to call it, by the eyes. The eyes are just a little bit off from what the real deal is, and that's how you could tell. But for a lot of people, this is a good thing because the Chinese version of Jimmy Cables is quite rare. It was only released in an 11-pack. The Thailand version is not that rare, but it's not as desirable as the Chinese version because of the production quality decline when they switch production from China to Thailand. So everyone, you know, if given the opportunity between China and Thailand, always going to opt for China more times than not. And yeah, Jimmy is no exception, especially with all the decals that he has that became quite blurry when he was made from Thailand. So yeah, I mean, it's a good fill-in. I'm not going to spend a hundred bucks to get a Chinese Jimmy Cable is one I could spend six to get this fake one. But that being said, I don't think the Chinese version of Jimmy is that expensive. So I should probably clarify that. All right, let's see what else is in this box. I honestly have no idea. Could be pulling out something I don't even want to share. Could be something personal. Oh, no, this is fine. <laughs> we got a couple ice racers here. The last two that Tomika has done. They might not do any more past these, but this is number three and number four. So you have Ice Racer's Mater. Such an odd choice, but Mater somehow finds his way into every one of these expanded universe lines. I mean, he's even going to be a GRC Mini from Mattel. But yeah, this looks really cool. I will be reviewing all four of them in one video soon. Here's Jackson Storm, who makes a lot more sense and looks way better in my opinion. Of course, there was Cruz Ramirez and Lady McQueen that were out in a previous wave. So all four of them I will review together. Again, who knows? Maybe that video is already out. I am not sure. Because these Giga Halls I record on just a completely different schedule than you would think. I just released Giga Hall Part 25 a few days ago. And so this one won't come out for you know at least another month. Oh yeah, we do have another prototype in here, I guess. I <laughs> guess we're not quite done with them just yet. And... Hey, I'm not complaining about that. It's my favorite thing to collect. This one's kind of like the Dan Sklarkenberg and the Doc because they're white-bodied but with a colored base. And this one is... Is it Airborne? No, it's Tailgate. I don't know my Demolition Derby racers. Or maybe I just messed them up to irritate you guys because you guys love the comments. When I mess up the Demolition Derby Racers names. Yeah, pretty sure this one's Tailgate though. Nice prototype with a code on it. Beige tires, red base. Pretty cool. Haven't seen any others like it, so very pleased. But yeah, definitely kind of along the same lines of the Dan Sklarkenberg here. And the Doc Hudson. But these are Chinese prototypes. All three of those were. Alright, we got another smaller box here. So more factory customs. 
This one's pretty boring because it looks very similar to the real deal. They did a good job with this one. However, you can immediately tell it's a factory custom because they didn't put light year tires on cam spinner here. They put Nivian, whatever that is, K-N-I-V-V-I-A-N. -V -V so interesting stuff there. Everything else looks pretty solid and pretty close to the real deal. The paint finish is sparkly. It looks really nice. But yeah, the tires are a dead giveaway there because Nivian is not light year. And I don't know, it's kind of like the Chinese factory customs customizers decided on their own little head cannon for a new tire brand, a little protest against the light year. Here we have Paul Conrev, who I was waiting to get when I did the next gen versus real deal video a month or so ago. Really wish that video caught some more attention because I think it's super informative, but not a whole bunch of people watch that. Here we have the Nivian tires there again, but overall it looks pretty good and pretty similar to what you would want on the Chinese version, like the actual release of Paul. Both of Paul and Cam did get Chinese releases, so they aren't going to be as desirable as like the Jim Reverick factory custom. His wing is so much lighter red than it should be though. It kind of was a little off-putting. It was like it was baked in the sun for a while. Here we have, I'm not sure this one's a factory custom to be honest. This one's actually a real deal. I bought it thinking it was a factory custom because it was only like six, seven bucks. And usually when they put something on for that cheap, you also just kind of immediately know it's a factory custom. They wouldn't sell a real deal that they know they didn't like fabricate themselves for only $7. And so this was seven bucks or eight or whatever. And I thought, oh yeah, they've now started doing Tom W. Factory Customs, just like they've done with Sadiq, Kristoff, Gabriel, and Aiden. But no, they still have some real Tom W.'s left. And you can see that those tires do read light year. So super interesting. I guess now I just have an extra Tom W. Not the worst thing in the world. Not going to complain about it, but it's something to look out for. Because I would not be surprised if like any day now they do start doing factory custom tom w's all right and the factory custom grind continues here with a harvey rod cap so one of the newer next gens they've done a really nice kind of paint finish here it's very glossy a gunmetal gray they did make an attempt at the light year tires here wow i cannot believe that guys the tires here are indeed light year it's not the clearest in the world, but those do say light year. That's awesome. The factory customizers are getting better, but unfortunately there are other telltale signs like the bigger eyes, the kind of foggier looking eyes, the wing that you're able to identify this as being a factory custom, but still a pretty cool next gen. And again, the Chinese version of Harvey Rodcap is pretty rare, so this could be a good alternative. For some buyers goodbye small box all right here we go i did not want this car but i got it sent to me anyways i actually ordered a road trip light mcqueen yeah the one with the suitcase on top and the hitch and it was only seven bucks again so even though they were using a picture of the real mattel release I figured it would be a factory custom. I mean, same thing with all these. They mainly use pictures of like the real deals. Or I should say sometimes they do, right? Sometimes they use a stock image or a picture of the real Mattel release and then you get the factory custom. That's obviously very bad. Sounds pretty illegal, but it's just kind of how it goes. It is pretty easy to get a refund though because they are at the whims of eBay. It's more dangerous to sell on eBay than it is to buy. Remember that. And so because they sent me the wrong McQueen here, I got it for free. They let me keep it. Like I said, more dangerous to sell than it is to buy. And yeah, I guess it's something, you know, like the Tom W that will just go in the storage. But it is kind of an interesting grab. I guess they aren't doing the road trip McQueens yet as factory customs. But what they are doing are holiday hotshot McQueens as factory customs. So this is kind of cool. It's got a slightly different expression, actually a pretty different expression than the final version that we ended up getting from Thailand and China. It's got really thick white wall tires there. They aren't super pure white though, a lot of cracks in them. 
and you have the green bolt here. So pretty cool all around. But yeah, was not expecting them to whip this one up. They have really been busy lately doing a lot of factory customs. But I will say most of the ones they have been doing are seemingly made to deceive. They are not like their own creations like the chrome ones that we used to get back in the day, which I would love some more of those. But yeah, they've been far more interested in just doing what Mattel or Tomica does and kind of putting their own little knockoff twist on it, right? So always good to keep that in mind. These are fakes, if that wasn't already clear. Oh, we got the best of the bunch to end off this video. I am being so sarcastic now. What on earth is this? Holy mother of God. So let me give you guys the quick lore on this. This is Chris Roman, the combustor racer. He was only ever released from Thailand from Mattel, but they plan to do him from China. There are a couple prototypes that leaked out of Chinese Chris Romans. I have a few of them myself. Okay, so there's that piece of the puzzle. But most people, you know, they do not have a Chinese Chris Roman and there's no way to get one because it was canceled. The second piece to the lore is that the Disney store, which you actually probably saw at the beginning of this Giga Hall, did a version of Chris Roman that has this kind of spooky looking goofy eyes where they're just kind of centered there in the white space looking dead ahead right into your soul just like the Francesco on the back of that two pack and yeah it looks horrible it looks just so weird to see a Disney store expression on a Mattel styled mold a 155 scale mold they did get the light year on the tires though I'll give them that but yeah, I mean, this just looks absolutely disgusting. They really wasted their opportunity on doing a Chinese Chris Roman. A lot of people would be interested in it, but they blew it. The wing looks absolutely horrible as well. It's not supposed to really look like that. And I can't get over that. I mean, surely they know they screwed this one up. I mean, it doesn't even have the rookie racing stripes like it's supposed to. The quality is just generally worse. It's got like matte finishes on the decals, but then the dark blue is glossy. And they had to have seen like this expression and been like, yeah, that ain't right. Like, you know, we got Harvey over here. I mean, he looks good. You know, we got Cam Spinner over here. He looks really good. Uh, this one just doesn't look right at all. But hey, maybe at the end of the day, that makes it a little bit more of a unique factory custom to have in your collection because of just how weird it is. But yeah, they really screwed the pooch on that. And since I still have it here on the table might as well show you guys that disney store one here it is there's the disney store chris roman you can see them right next to each other and you can see they pretty much just copied from that that's why the text on the wing is so small as well just such a horrible effort but hey i think that's the law of averages kicking in because they are trying to deceive they're trying to emulate mattel's work and yep well they just will never be able to fully get it right and then last but not least for these is sheldon shifter the sputter stop racer another one they really kind of messed up but almost in a good way you have them being the brown up front looks pretty good and then just went to a way lighter shade on the back it's like a mix between a green and a brown a really weird looking color on the back half of him here the wing is then in this turquoise the colors are just way off i mean he's got turquoise wheels here as well i don't know what they were thinking with these two they came out together i guess you could say they were listed at the same time chris and sheldon here and they must have had like the intern working on these like the intern factory customizer analyst or whatever you know because these are bad <laughs> there's no way around it i'm sorry they are just poor attempts at factory customs but hey it makes it easier for us to know that they're fake now before we fully depart i'm going to drop a bombshell on you guys and maybe you already know this because the prototype hall is out but i can't not put this in this video i want giga hall part 26 right I think it's 26 to be known for this car in and of itself. And that is the first physical incarnation of Chuck Shocks, a canceled character from Planes, Fire, and Rescue. He appears in the Chops TV scene. 
with Nick Loop and Lopez, Sergeant Rhodey, the police car, obviously Blade Ranger, Blazing Blade Ranger. Now he has his impound boots on the opposite side of the stock image that we saw many, many years ago. But this is indeed Chuck Shocks, and it's the first physical version we have ever seen of him. Before this, it was not known that there were any actual physical material versions of him. Just that picture. That's literally all we got. Hopefully I remember to put it on the screen. But if you just Google Disney planes, Chuck Shocks, it'll come up. So cool, guys. This is now one of my favorite prototypes in my collection, if not my favorite, because it is just so special to me. And I think out of all the cars and planes that they canceled from the planes, fire and rescue, and just the first movie in general, this would be my favorite. It's hard for it not to be. The police car would be up there too, for sure, but this one is so sick. And is it ironic that my favorite from the planes movies would be a car? No, because... I love cars at the beginning of the day. If they started with the Planes movies, I probably would not be where I'm at now. I don't think a lot of people were. Planes just aren't as tangible. They aren't as relatable as cars, something that most people drive every day, use every day. But guys, that is all I have for this installment of the Giga Hall. What an absolute mega haul. This is over an hour long, I'm pretty sure at this point. Actually, oh my God, we're not even done yet. We're not even done. Oh goodness, guys. So, good friend of mine, the Diecast Empress, picked up some international carded 2024 singles for me at her local, I think it was B&M store in the UK. And those are from Case D, Cave Mater here. And so you can tell they're international. They don't have the new for 2024 snipe. And on the back, there's a bunch of languages stated, nothing else that you can collect. They don't show any other new cars. So this is really cool. I obviously have become quite an aficionado of canceled, or not canceled, but international cards because it just kind of adds an extra spin on everything. And my local Meyer store was getting in international cases for a good portion of last year. So I ended up with a lot of international cards. Here we have Tractor Ghost. Same exact traits. And yeah, with these, I haven't even found the US card versions of any of them except for Tractor Ghost. So really happy to get them on cards of some sort. Lady McQueen Deputy has her with the slime here. See, it looks so bad when you don't have the new for 2024 logo and you did not update his artwork to reflect the slime. Just a really bad look overall. Just seems like a bad marketing strategy to me. A lot of people might look at this, glance at it, and be like, oh yeah, I already have that from last year. Not seeing that it has slime. Well, why don't you see that it has slime? Well, they don't tell you it has slime. They don't show you it has slime on the card art. They don't write it in his name. It's just on the tie cast itself. All right, for realsies now, that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Okay, maybe we're not done quite yet. I do want to show you guys some of my in-store find. Just to cap off this Giga Haul, I did end up grabbing a Cruz Ramirez hauler. I've only found one so far. I'm sure she'll be quite rare until they start sending out more cases. They release another case because, yeah, it's our first new hauler in quite some time. I've also been able to mess around and grab some of the Easter cars that are popping up at the weirdest locations possible because... Mattel. I don't know what they were thinking with these. They actually did a good job with the Christmas stuff, putting them in Target stores, but the Easter stuff, no. They've been showing up at Kroger's, Marshall's, TJ Maxx. So here are some of the ones I grabbed. I did grab some other ones for some of my friends, but I will be hanging on to these flows because I think they will be quite rare. And yeah, it's actually quite nice when you find these at Marshalls or TJ Maxx because let's see if the sticker, yep, they're only $2.99. And I don't know what they're comparing at, $4, because they aren't sold anywhere but these discount stores. And at Kroger, they're $6.99. And if you don't have the Kroger card, they're $9.99. It's absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, I mean, it's a phenomenal price. I guess they're just comparing them to like a random car at maybe Meyer because I don't know where anything would sell for four bucks and especially not a more higher scale line like the Christmas stuff or the Easter ones here. And to cap it all off, and these are a lot of items from the last episode of The Hunt. 
the new Mini Racer 3 packs that are all pretty boring. This one has Doug Crankle, Rodan Marker, and Ivy, none of which really meld together. I mean, <laughs> Doug Crankle does not even appear in this episode of Cars on the Road, so I don't know, again, what Mattel was thinking, but hey, it's what we've come to expect. A little next-gen pack, Jackson Storm, Nick Shift, and Flipped Over. Pretty nice trio, I would say, but they aren't new or anything like that. And then this one's probably the worst of the bunch, just because I feel like they've done so many packs like it, so many Dynaco packs. Metallic, Dynaco, McQueen, Cruz, and Rotor Turboski. I guess it is kind of cool to see Metallic, Dynaco, McQueen, but they don't even tell you it's Metallic on the back here, as per usual. So finally, that is all I have for you guys for this episode of The Hunt. As always, thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen anything in stores lately. Maybe some of the Easter stuff, maybe some haulers, maybe you got some online scores you want to tell me about. Bye now. Okay.